I will uh, hand over the presentation to my uh, colleague Maya, and she will um, introduce you to different learning activities within our project. Thank you. Hello. Can you make me as a presenter so yes, I can share I am. my? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello from my side as well. So I will be telling you a bit about the learning activities that Sums Up offers because we have a we are offering a wide variety of different activities. And the aim of Sums Up project is really to help cities to setting up sustainable urban mobility plans, to have a strategic approach on local level to deal with transport related problems and also ensure sustainable mobility for everybody. And we have focused on the take up on the countries where the take up of the SUMP is low and that where the negative effects are very severe. And during the project, we aim to train 100 cities and also offer capacity building for 200 mobility practitioners at least. And what is mobility practitioner? practitioner. We define mobility practitioner as somebody who might be working for the city and working with mobility planning or related fields and who is interested to learn more about SUMPs. But that can be also a person working for an NGO or a consultancy or a company who are working with cities. Cities and with different mobility issues. Or also a person who is working in a city network or other support organization or or from a related field so everybody basically can participate who wish to learn more about sustainable urban mobility plans so we always mentioned that there are as many different ways to set up SUMBs as there are cities and it's very important that the plan is designed so that it reflects the local needs, capacities and the specific planning context. However, there are also common elements that result from implementing the SUMP cycle steps and activities that form important part of the SUMP. For example, you need to understand and analyze the mobility situation before you can start and actually define the mobility needs and also stakeholders and citizens should be involved in this process. So going through this cycle includes quite many different steps. So it might sound a bit complicated and overwhelming if you look at this cycle, but luckily there is already now a lot of support available for cities who are preparing SUMPs and we are also offering some activities where, where you can have help to prepare your own SUMP on the local level. Probably you all know the guidelines for SUMP, <clears throat> but there are also several other guidelines for the different steps in the SUMP process. And what we offer, we offer a wide variety of different activities. So we have this SUMP learning programs, and I will tell a bit more how can you join those later. We are also offering e-courses, which is really easy method to learn when you have time to learn and then also these webinars that you are now participating but also we have produced a lot of guidance material different tools and different reports to support your work so the SUMB learning programs we have already implemented or are currently implementing four different learning programs and we have now just last week opened the call for the last SUMB learning program the five. So our target is to select up to 25 planning authorities for this call. And topic for this learning program will be SUMP implementation, financing and procurement. So these learning programs are always six month programs, which include face to face workshops, e learning and webinars. So there are different, different kind of tools used and the focus is really to support cities in their work and also increase the exchange of experiences between different cities. And the target group we have this in this call are planning authorities with already some experience on SUMB 
or implementing their first SUMP. So this is not targeted to those who are just have started the SUMP process because we go a bit, bit more detailed into the phases in later in the SUMP cycle. And the selected planning authorities will receive 7,500 euros to participate in those activities. And the program is scheduled to be started in May. So if you wish to apply, the call will close on January 11th next year. And there is a lot of information available in our website about the call. Then we have e-learning courses. We offer all together several e-learning courses for experts who want to work with sustainable urban mobility plans. And the courses helps to go through the different phases and steps in the SUMP process and get guidance on how those could be implemented on local level. And they are self-study courses and available anytime. And they are also free to participate. And we have also included case examples from cities who are already experienced with SUMPs to give you concrete and practical examples how it could be done. Also, we have tips for guidelines that could be helpful and for further reading. And also exercises where you can practice different steps, like how to prepare, what to include in an action plan and so on. And everything is available in the Mobility Academy. And we will have seven courses starting from preparing for SUMP and analysis of the mobility situation and then going to the SUMP vision and how it can be prepared in cooperation with different stakeholders. And then it goes, it follows the SUMP cycle and then how to set up SUMP as a strategic process and set measurable targets for the plan that can be then also followed. And then how to identify SUMB measures, prioritize those measures, and how to then really prepare the SUMB action plan to ensure the implementation of the plan, and then also implementing the plan. And the first three courses will be online from Friday on, so this week, and the next three courses four, five, and six will be launched in the spring. And then the course seven will be launched in autumn 2019. But you can then find those from the Mobility Academy. And then we have the webinars, which we have, we are focusing on different aspects of the SUMPs. And we want to introduce useful tools and guidelines for you, as well as showcase case examples. Like we have also today, one city example and then allow some room for discussion and question as well. And we will, as Esther mentioned, we will have still five more webinars to come. And the next webinar will focus on data collection in SUMP, and that will be organized in January 2018. So also, I would propose to follow our Twitter or website to get the date and get registered as well. Then we already have organized national workshops for mobility practitioners in different countries, but we still have like two workshops to come in 2019. The first will be in Italy in May. The place will be defined later and also in June in San Sebastian. So these are opportunities to exchange with peers from your own country and hear about good examples and SUMPs on local level. And these will be usually organized in national languages as well, taking into the context where cities are working. So for these also, I would propose to follow our website. Then SAMSAPS has already produced reports. For example, we have produced a status of SUMPs in the EU member state, where you can check the status of, of your country. Like how are the SUMPs prepared there? And is there some support mechanisms available as well? Then we have also produced policy recommendations, which have really targeted recommendations also to local level. So these are available on our website. Then SAMSA's 
Thumbs Up has also produced several guidelines and I'm not going to go into detail of these because Anna will be telling a bit more about these guidelines in the next presentations. But there are the messages that there are already a variety of different tools available that are really useful for cities. And these guidelines are, for example, for cities who are in different levels in the SUMP. But that was a brief introduction to all these learning activities that we offer. And next, we will then hear a bit more about the concrete tools that you can use in your process. Thank you. OK, thank you, Maya, very much for that insight. And we will um, show you here. You see already the website. And in the end, we will show it one more time also so um, that you, you, you note it down already. There you'll find all the information about upcoming events. OK, um, then I would hand over to uh, Anna for the next presentation on different concrete tools for starting the SUMP. Do you un unmute yourself still that we hear you? OK, now Anna disappeared from the webinar. Um, let's have a short. I hope that she will be back in a moment. Okay, now Anna is back. Do you? Okay, can you hear? Yes, me? you're back. Yes. <laughs> yes, I had a breakdown of the internet. Okay, <laughs> okay I'll try. Which let's try again. Here is the, the screen. Yes. Can you? Yes. See Great. me also. Yes. Yeah. We okay. See Good. Um, so I apologize. Uh, apologize for this short inconvenience. Good morning, everybody from Freiburg. My name is Anna Dragucescu. Thank you, Esther, and thank you, Maya, for uh, introducing the project and for introducing myself. I am the coordinator of Sums Up, and it's my great pleasure this morning to introduce you the Sums Up tools that uh, will help you and support you in the development and implementation of SUMP in your cities. As I have seen in the Paul, earlier, um, you find yourselves uh, with the cities you work for or you work with in different um, uh, stages of SUMP development or implementation, or you haven't started at all. So I'm pretty sure these tools that uh, I will talk to you about today will help you and guide you through this um, sometimes challenging process. So SAMSAP uh, has ident identified uh, different uh, planning tools and methods, and um, it's working with different. Um, uh, it's working with uh, different, um, very um, very helpful tools like the self-assessment scheme the tool inventory, uh, the guidelines that Maya has talked to you about. Uh, we have produced manuals for different categories of cities and the action plan that you have uh, already heard from Maya's presentation and the uh, SUMPs in member states report. I will guide you through uh, these tools uh, step by step for the next uh, almost 20 minutes. I'll try to be as quick as possible. Uh, so the first one uh, that the first tool that I'm going to talk about is the um, uh, SUMP self-assessment scheme, which has been developed in close cooperation with DigiMove and Yasme uh, within the framework of the challenge project. It's an online tool that you can use free, 
and it allows anonymous assessment. So it's a simple concept of 100 yes and no questions balanced across the SUMP principles. Um, it assesses the um, SUMP development process and it provides feedback on strengths and weaknesses for some steps and principles. Uh, the self-assessment scheme is closely linked to the update of selected tools, so SAMSAP will further um, enhance the recently launched SUMP uh, self-assessment scheme. So uh, within the framework of SAMSAP, we will try to improve uh, this scheme because we have uh, identified certain flaws. Uh, sometimes we have received uh, feedback from cities that it's uh, a bit too long sometimes and um, that uh, the simple yes and no questions sometimes it it could be it could make it difficult for the cities to choose an answer you can see at the bottom of my slide the link you can access to see the old self-assessment scheme and once the new one will be uh, launched you will be also informed about this so we will revise it with uh, um, and include a lower number of questions. So we will diminish the number of questions. As I told you, we have received uh, feedback that the number of questions are too many. We will develop tailor-made sets of questions for different starting points and uh, for cities without an SUMP. The cities uh, will be uh, supported in identifying strengths and weaknesses to improve um, their uh, SUMP development. There will be questions related to uh, assessment of the current and future performance, about the development of a long-term vision and implementation, the development of all transport, transport modes, um, the uh, questions about cooperation across the institutional boundaries, uh, questions about the involvement of citizens or the monitoring and evaluation process. Uh, the main focus of the new version will be to help cities even more than we have done it before, um, to analyze and improve the mobility planning procedure. Optimally, it should be used in an internal municipal workshop, so um, it's always uh, advised to be used internally where planners discuss their strengths uh, and weaknesses questions uh, question by question. These are just examples of how um, the questions look like. So uh, some questions are related to the assessment of the SUMP document. Some questions are related to the assessment of planning activities. You can find out more by accessing the link that uh, I have shown you before in the previous slide. Another very uh, important tool that we are very proud of is a tool developed uh, in the framework of um, between the was that was born between the cooperation of Civitas Satellite and Civitas Sum Sub project. Since uh, we have developed, um, uh, we have uh, understood there are synergies between the two projects and that the two pro both projects had to develop such a tool. We work together and uh, we have developed an online database with over 100 tools and methods that will support you and other local authorities and practitioners to make better and informed decisions about which planning tool to apply and uh, that would best fit the local context. So um, just to, to give you um, a short overview of how the tool inventory looks like, you can access it in, on, a, on a link um, from civitas.eu website. Um, <clears throat> each tool has a separate page for the, um, for, to, to, that includes a description. You can use uh, the tool immediately, you can go to its individual page or you can click and read more about, about it. Um, just to, to give you an, an example, so this is one of the tools, you can read a summary about it, you can um, select uh, the application areas, so um, you will see in my, in my um, 
following slides about this. And uh, you can access the tool or you can uh, just uh, have a good um, overview of what the tool is all about. You can also rate the tool if you find it useful, uh, which will help us understand how useful these tools are for you as a city or as a mobility practitioner or um, yeah, in, in your daily work. There have been three main steps um, to develop the content of the tool inventory. So first, it were, uh, the tool search, we searched for tools, then we categorized the tools and we have went through a quality control. There was an extensive tool search among the outputs of previous or ongoing European mobility project. There were tools offered by international organizations, private sector, various existing tools, tool collections, tool guides, um, project and company websites. And we have been mainly guided by uh, the SAMSAB needs assessment survey that we have performed at the beginning of the project where uh, one of the questions, questions asked the cities about tools and methods that would be really useful in SUMP development and implementation. Therefore, 186 SAMP tools were identified by uh, our partners from Ruprecht and Salt. Um, after a professional assessment of each tool, 128 tools were selected to be contacted in the first round. Therefore, there has been a tool categorization. So there are uh, uh, thematic areas, application areas, the tool type. So there are these uh, specific filters, um, the basic information about the tool and the language of the tool. Uh, these are very uh, practical information um, that um, each tool um, contains. Um, the entire tool list went through a very extensive quality control, so all entries were reviewed for relevance to mobility planners and decision makers for readability and completeness. Uh, most tool developers were contacted to uh, obtain additional information about the tools. And um, yes, this is the final list that you can find on the uh, Civitas website. Another very useful um, tool we have developed um, within the project is the SUMP registry. Uh, the SUMP registry is a, is a repository of uh, some of the uh, best developed um, SUMPs across Europe. Uh, you can filter the information there by a country, population of the city, the language of the documents, since uh, the cities that have uh, that have uploaded their documents have uploaded in their uh, local language. All documents are PDFs and can be downloaded downloaded directly from the website. If you would like to upload an SUMP, then this is also very simple. You can click the button seen below that says, please upload your SUMP here. And um, this uh, would be very helpful for other to share your good practice um, in SUMP uh, development. Other thumbs up support tools that I'm pretty sure you'll find very useful are the three manuals you've heard about from Maya. So this is a series of manuals covering three different city profiles about um, manuals on integration of measures and measure packages in an SUMP. They provide guidance in identifying the appropriate list of measures for SUMP and uh, they contain recommendations, they rate rating systems to prioritize this list of measures and um, checklists tailored to each city type. So we have a manual for START uh, that is called START for beginner cities that offers examples and suggestions on conducting measure selection for a first SUMP. Then we have the step up manual for intermediate cities that gives advice on applying uh, a more systematic approach to measure selection and the innovate uh, manual for advanced cities 
This uh, focuses on finding ways to cooperate with stakeholders and the public and um, for a higher level of uh, citizen participation in the cities when um, implementing the list of measures. Uh, just a quick uh, word about this, the um, status of some in EU member states. Uh, Maya has also mentioned this document. Um, it's a very extensive research we have developed um, across all member states country to understand the current status of national SUMP programs, which is very important for us when uh, providing a national um, recommendations so providing recommendations for national framework implementation or further development um, and uh, one of the final uh, supporting tools that i'm going to talk to you about is the develop it's the SAMP action plan so this comes as a natural um, follower document of the measure selection manuals uh, because it includes um, a template for action for developing an action plan to be included in your SUMP, the responsibilities, resources, stakeholder coordination, time plans uh, that needs to be included in this plan. Um, you will see different action plan templates used uh, for by different cities. Um, then um, um, the, you will understand the entire process. Um, that needs to be developed when develop when uh, setting up such a document within the framework of the SUMP development. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll leave the floor to uh, Christine. Mm -hmm. I hope you thank heard me. There were no hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Anna. Thanks very much. I think we heard you all well. Before Christina starts, I would uh, like to ask you one more time. Um, with the with the poll about how have you used any of those presented tools or do you know any of the presented tools that Anna just introduced? Mm -hmm. I'll close the poll and share it. So here we can see, as probably expected, the majority of you have, of course, or know the SUMP guidelines and have probably used them. Um, okay, 15%, the self-assessment, the registry, the tool inventory, that's great. Um, and even 15% are some up guidelines. That's really interesting for us to know, but definitely room for improvement. So really just uh, go and have a look uh, and all those different tools, they're all uh, available online. Um, and uh, we hope that you find them useful and that you will use them in the future as well. Thank you. Um, so then I will hand or give the presentation to Christina. And yeah, I'm really happy, Christina, that we have you here to uh, give us some insight, some practical insight, how the city of Vilnius has started up their SUMP. Uh, so the you. floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Esther. Thank you for inviting me to join this uh, webinar, as, as was said already. And I hope some of my colleagues from Vilnius, or at least from Lithuania, are also watching this webinar. Uh, I would like to share experience which we had in, in Vilnius. So before before getting to the Vilnius, I would like to to share a little, a little bit about um, our background on mobility management uh, generally in Lithuania. It's quite a new discipline, I must say, and that has some taste also in our planning culture. Then I would like to screen Vilnius SMP process, and if there is a room, a time, I would like also to show uh, measures which we had planned in Vilnius SMP. And uh, for those who are preparing the first uh, plan, it could be nice, maybe inspiration for how to present it and how to illustrate it, or maybe even what to suggest. So 
I'm 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 taking a look to my watch, but Esther, don't don't hesitate to stop me if I'm taking too long because sometimes I like to speak. So yes. Okay. So about, so about um, about our legal background in Lithuania, uh, in spite of the fact that uh, Altis had uh, and not only Altis um, different projects in EU and even some countries had prepared the uh, guidelines for SCMP. Of course, we we also uh, look mostly at LTS guidelines because I also involved uh, years ago into the LTS Plus. But uh, that knowing that is not really it was not enough really for starting uh, SCMP process in Lithuania at all. So um, until maybe I don't know. 2005, mobility management or mobility planning as a discipline was not really known in Lithuania. And uh, within various projects, European projects, we, me and some other enthusiasts, we just started lobbying in public authorities, in, in the Lithuanian parliament, in different ministries. And uh, we were going to the regional levels, to local levels. And as a result of those um, numerous um, awareness, raising events, uh, we finally achieved really strong support from Ministry of Transport and Communication and also from Ministry of Environment and maybe even uh, Ministry of Energy is also quite aware about this discipline and the need and the uh, uh, importance of planning and mobility management. So this topic is already recognized in Lithuania and uh, uh, in spite of the fact that there are a lot of uh, numerous guidelines and recommendations how to prepare it, Ministry of uh, Transport and Lithuania, they had produced the own Lithuanian national guidelines how to prepare sustainable urban mobility plans and the uh, country had received uh, grants or support from European Union for preparation of plans. So as a result, uh, we have uh, 18 plus one as a city and town in Lithuania who had already finished preparation process or just about to finish, like Vilnius as well. Some some procedures I think had left. So so we had a national guidelines, they got funds and we've got to, uh, a long way to do to 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 realize or to prepare our first sums. So uh, I think uh, not to be surprised for you when I will be showing Vilnius, uh, let's say, methodological approach, I would like to note shortly what are our guidelines about and how do they fit to this circle of uh, SMP planning. So, and unfortunately, Lithuanian guidelines are focusing too much on uh, analysis of existing situation and too much uh, emphasizing uh, the need to look for problems, not that much the need on uh, creating vision and creating uh, goals and targets, how this vision must be reached. So in Vilnius, we, we had different approach, but most of the cities uh, who were following um, our guidelines, they really followed guidelines and they prepared very uh, in-depth analysis of uh, the existing mobility situation and then uh, to less, I think to less attention was to, pay to develop good scenarios, how to develop this mobility situation in the way we want to. And so in this way, if, if to see how do we fit to a uh, well-known SVMP circle, uh, unfortunately I must say that we are taking like um, I don't know, like 30 or 25 percent of all the circles in our uh, national guidelines. That's why some steps from the circle, of, of course, were missed in Vilnius as well, but not the major one and not the most important one. But um, the rest of Lithuanian And this way might be, uh, we might look more than feasibility study or some short term strategy. Uh, 
then uh, but not like a live process of sustainable urban mm, uh, can you hear me uh, your so we, your audio uh, has been breaking have... just, you know, just your audio has been breaking now okay. a couple of times just a... we hear so you maybe right I should now turn off webcam to have it better okay so so yes, so Lithuanian guidelines, we told us to analyze nine topics, nine thematic areas, and most of the cities, of course, uh, were enough to do it. But uh, this uh, very sectoral approach, I don't think it's really good, good approach. So in Vilnius case, we did multidisciplinary analysis, and we were not looking at the uh, at the topic as, for example, model split or urban freight we were looking at the city as a a full picture with different um with different topics in, in one time so you will see in the measures if, if, if i have time and if i have good connection you will see in measures how did it look but most of the cities we just analyzed those nine thematic areas and we produced separate suggestions how to improve each or few of these thematic areas and these thematic areas if you see full list let's say of the most popular mobility management strategies and measures uh, uh, in Lithuania only those uh, those uh, brown ones were really covered uh, while I think that some some other colors are much more important so in Vilnius case we covered all well-known measures and inventing maybe even new ones but just to, to understand the process in country I I would like to point it out that um, there is there was quite a narrow attitude to what city can suggest because of quite narrow attitude uh, in recommendations what to analyze so that was background and uh, have to go uh, to the Vilnius case and to show uh, SCMP process. Uh, I would start from um, very, very basic steps from the circle. Well, they were not so basic, but uh, just for those who are beginners and uh, for, for those who who have no time or have no budget or have no capacities to go step by step as uh, Eltis had um, suggested years ago, I would like just point out for, from my perspective the most important steps and just to keep them always done. So first of all, of course, what we did uh, and that took quite long to, to de determine and to agree on common vision for Vilnius and uh, so to set uh, the goals how to reach this vision. And this process was not really easy because uh, I want to say because of the plan culture maybe and um, a lack of participatory approach in the country because when I started asking um, uh, stakeholders and um, um, let's say owners of this project what is the vision for city and how should it fit to the SEMP uh, sometimes I was hearing that you are planning and you must suggest so that was really crucially important to uh, and and we applied various uh, methods like uh, creative workshops and some uh, tete -tete co uh, uh, communication to create a uh, common vision and common goals with common targets and common indicators. So that was, I think, a very important uh, step. And I would suggest not to start even doing and analyzing while the vision is not clear. Uh, analyzing and analysis part was our, I think in all the Lithuania, it was quite a weak point because uh, uh, planners, they, they were playing with data too much from my point of view. And Vilnius did the same, although Vilnius had uh, thankfully all the data, uh, it was almost collected. We didn't really need to put many effort to collect new data, but uh, analyzing in, in ridiculous details some processes or some details of i don't know for example uh tires of electric bus are they much much uh, uh and uh, louder than tires of a diesel bus and so on and so on. so we get in 
in that kind of details which were not used and they just took the time and some initiatives and motivation from the planners. So don't uh, repeat our mistake. Then uh, the third step didn't really happen very much in Vilnius, but, uh, uh, but we tried, is to identify the politicians, how far they are ready to go. Because before, uh, from my perspective, and when, when somebody, uh, for example, myself, would be coordinating another plan, it's not worth to start uh, uh, thinking about measures if you don't know how far politicians are ready to go. If, if they say that they are not ever uh, undertaking such measure as pricing or parking or low emission zones or congestion charges, don't even start. Uh, working on, on developing those measures or if they deny the need of education and awareness raising, don't start the uh, communication campaign and only prioritize yourself on what you really believe politicians are ready to implement because the plan, uh, the hypothetical approach, I think is not very useful because in this cloud of hypothetical measures which are not uh, going to be implemented, the real measures could be lost. So my suggestion is to to clear the politicians how ready they are, how far they are ready to go with strategy, with, uh, uh, with um, discrimination of cars and so on, and then only to, to set up the, the measures. And uh, the, the, okay, the, the final part of our SEMP was, and I, um, I left the project at that moment and my, my team finished, my previous team finished um, selecting and evaluating uh, most effective measures and uh, describing circumstances in what, in what situation those measures should be applied. Like uh, we, didn't, we didn't put too much effort to, I don't know, to point out every bus stop which needs to be, I don't know, uh, got closer to the residents or changed somehow or had to, to have more frequency of buses. We didn't do that in details, but what did, we did, we described in what density of the residents, uh, what, uh, what um, I don't know, environment in terms of public transport, in terms of shared mobility, in terms of uh, bicycle uh, infrastructure and all of the measures, what is needed when we have uh, certain zones, certain uh, uh, residents and the working place uh, combination and so on and so on. So that was done. And uh, as I said, the uh, Vilnius is all just about to be uh, confirmed, approved in the council. So it's, it's, I think it's done. We can say it's done. And implementation of the measures, I, I wrote that it's not done yet, but I think I deleted the slide, but I wanted also, uh, especially to the cities who, who don't have SMPs, to say and to point out that uh, you can have uh, mobility management even if you don't have a SMP. Because uh, in Vilnius we had quite a good, I think, quite a good public transport. Although use and uh, model split is not very good, but public transport as such was working quite well. We have uh, a few sharing mobility operators. We have. Uh, uh, we have uh, already some other measures implemented without having a CMP. So, so now is only um, what needs to be done now is to finish what was done or to to apply new measures, but and to continue to continue monitoring are we uh, effective or not? Because uh, as I showed in my previous slide, monitoring was not programmed in Lithuanian guidelines. And for example, in Vilnius case, we of course set um, we set indicators of effect. What uh, what the results? What effect do we expect after implementing a group of measures? But uh, I cannot say truly the confidence of 100% that those uh, indicators would be followed and monitored. And what happens if someone sees uh, that a uh, measure is not that effective as what expected. So this, um, this system was not, unfortunately, was not done in Vilnius CMP, neither in any Lithuanian CMP. And 
this is, I think, a very weak point in terms of process, not a document. So, uh, uh, another uh, very important thing to say is, well, this slide is just, just to remind me not to forget to say how important is uh, communication with, uh, first of all, the project owner. Well, in Vilnius case, it was vice mayor of uh, of Vilnius, he was kind of owner of this project and he was uh, leading a working group for this project. So it's crucially important to really involve uh, different stakeholders, different actors, uh, academics, um, society, NGOs, and so on, and to work proactively with them. And uh, I think um, what was very good in Vilnius case, we, we, I think we made them to believe and to feel that uh, Vilnius SUMP is owned by everyone, not by city only. Although if there is negative critic, then yes, it's only planners and only city. But when we have something good, I, I can feel that people are owning it and we are uh, suggesting some extras from Vilnius SUMP and so on and so on. So that I think is very good. For for to reach uh, this, this, um, this uh, situation, we had a communication plan, and uh, one plan was with stakeholders and with uh, working committee and working groups, and it was more or less um, described already in recommendations and, and guidelines. And sometimes it was quite official, sometimes it really was really effective. But then we have uh, a huge plan of uh, and huge uh, list, numerous list of uh, things what we done to get the society into the participation in preparation and discussing and I hope an implementation process as well. So we had the uh, thematic conferences, uh, even international one. We have a lot of thematic events like working, um, like workshops, uh, meeting uh, somebody who are like target group, like people with special needs. We, we had uh, even technical visits, we, we met uh, uh, healthcare representatives, for example, we met academics uh, in Transport, we met uh, students in uh, which are doing infographics for cycling, and so on, so on. So we not only spread the message, we not uh, only raised awareness of citizens and uh, and I don't know important actors, but also got very I think very good. Um, feedback in terms of discussions, in terms of uh, suggestions, in terms of uh, avoiding to, uh, to make some mistakes and so on. Uh, and we also have uh, publicity via, via our website, which you can check, uh, there is a link, and via um, participation in, in TV or radio shows and and writing, uh, writing by ourselves or just giving interviews to papers and so on and so on. So I think th this was very important. And uh, they set up this communication plan from the very beginning. And maybe we didn't do, we didn't tick all the boxes, but we do, we did most of them. And I think it was very, very good. And I wish you to, to have the same. So about uh, uh, to continue about methodology and process of doing women's CMP, I need to get you a little bit into the context, not into the details about uh, how many streets or how many cars do we really have or bus lines, but just to show that uh, we didn't see, we see Vilnius not in the boundaries, which are uh, those brown lines. Uh, we see Vilnius as something really bigger and uh, we had kind of uh, three different cities in, in, in the city and then in general we have five different zones to analyze and to suggest. So that's why our methodology was differing and our measures were differing from part to part. So the, the most important and the most sensitive of course is historical city center, old town, then central zone, then middle zone with high density of uh, residents, then all the villains with private housing and uh, and industry and airport and so on is another zone and the zone i don't know like 20 kilometers radius from from Vilnius boundaries was also 
taken into account because commuting is um, really challenging Vilnius, as I think uh, most of the cities are uh, ex uh, uh, feeling the same. Commuting is really an issue. So that just to explain why why our some methodological methodological approach was in the way it was. So even for for doing analysis, we already were looking at the at the not only on the transport districts, which are really important for metrics, but and modeling maybe and understanding uh, behavior uh, of commuters, but also just to realize how how do people differ and how do they travel and why do they travel in this way. We even model split had for different uh, thematic areas and then solutions, of course, arrived accordingly. Another important thing to say in Lithuania, in Lithuania, behave, uh, changes, behavioral changes is not discipline, which is taken really into serious account. And um, it's, it bothers me a lot, but it's more often understood that SCMP is about uh, transport in, and commuting and infrastructure and less about behavioral changes. So to support uh, this discipline, although it was not in our task, but I, we just understood that it's necessary. We had a nice team of um, anthropologists who, who really helped us with advices how and how to get and how to change attitude of different target groups in different areas of the city. So that's, that was also one of the good lessons um, I would like to transfer to other cities. Don't end up with uh, urbanist, environmental, and engineering people and economists. Have philosophy uh, or psychology or anthropology nearby as well. So having this uh, five zones concept, each topic we analyzed uh, in uh, four approaches. In urbanistic approach, if it's city center, what should we uh, exclude or include, for example? Of course, in terms of infrastructure planning, although we know very well that the mobility management is not about uh, giving new supply, but uh, some hygiene, some things still, they, they are still a must in, in Lithuania and in Vilnius, so infrastructure planning was on our agenda as well. And of course, having already strategic um, decision for for some infrastructure and urbanistic approach, like for example, uh, I don't know, extending parking zone, of course, ITS and the management solutions were added as well. We didn't have ITS as separate topic. We had it inside of every measure we were suggesting. and. Another block of um, of uh, of uh, suggestion was, of course, social marketing and education. If, inter for example, if we are talking about pedestrian uh, conditions for pedestrians, and we say that it's necessary to have, for example, school travel plans, how children, how people must go to the to the school. Uh, the most important thing in this measure is education for teachers and parents and children before they actually build better conditions for, for walking or riding bicycle or scooter or so on. So each topic uh, was analyzed in those uh, four approaches and suggestions were given accordingly. For selecting measures, uh, of course, uh, we had um, in mind effectiveness we want to achieve uh, and uh, most of our measures were really about uh, doing changes in behavior and decreasing negative transport impact but uh, and also about improving quality of life and accessibility to, to spaces so while selecting measures we were thinking about these three major uh, expectations for the measure uh, but for choosing and deciding on the particular measure we of course they did a good case studies analysis and uh, we have now we have great library of various um, various tools and various decisions which could be applied in cities but also which is not I don't think it's really 
necessary and I don't even think it's useful, but we did modeling to test a bit how, for example, how public uh, solutions for public transport really affect city uh, city life. And we, of course, did uh, a, not we, already my colleagues did a huge work on uh, assessing economically each measure and in, in each measures group. So technically we did a lot of, of uh, work to kind of convince ourselves and themselves about each measure practically already from those um, from those pre expectations we knew which measure we want to to suggest and to, to be implemented so this was our uh, methodological approach and uh, uh, as I said, the, the very important thing was to agree on the vision. If uh, if, uh, if we know that uh, Vilnius has common vision for city in all the spheres to be open and uh, fast, traveling we, we didn't we didn't see priority for traveling only speed. So we uh, positioned it, um, vision for Vilnius a little bit differently and their mayor and um, and uh, uh, cabinet of mayor and some other politicians and working group really working on on saying this vision and describing the key goals and and uh, with uh, real objectives to achieve so well i probably won't uh, won't get into the details about each objective or each goal how the how how they laid out into the uh, real measures because they are they are not very different I think from any city uh, we just believe a transport system must be friendly for families and as it was said I think in Copenhagen or Malmes SCMP city must serve and mobility must be so the kid and so the old person can use it so our main focus was about it mm. hmm. funny i first of all showed objectives and then the goals but never mind i'm not going to read it anyway so as uh, best expression as uh, the most uh, important uh, kpi for our vision and for our goals and objectives of course was model split and um, the model split I showing you at the moment is not is not the same as it remains in the SUMP because it was when we the point is showing it that when we started uh, creating vision and goals we had very ambition expectation for model split in 2030 like uh, to decrease twice uh, usage of cars and and to multiply 10 times usage of bicycles and so on but after selecting already measures and doing some modeling and um, doing um, uh, also questionnaires and research on on traveling behavior we saw that until 2030 is really not impossible to achieve because we have like two years for implementing measures according to our national guidelines and then we have 10 years to obtain the results so we changed later on this uh, uh, desirable model split we changed but it still remains ambitious and there are quite a things to do to achieve it so that was our process and that was our vision and uh, I don't know Esther if if I if I have time or is it worth to go through and to show a few slides how our measures looks like not really uh, saying much about it i i mean i think you still can take take some time to like five ten minutes to to do i think it's very interesting for for the others to hear okay so as i said uh in business we didn't look in business we didn't look at uh, as a set of the different topics but first of all what we did we took a look at the illness structure and uh, and having in my own mind uh, those zones which are already presented we kind of uh, uh, draw the uh, priorities and criteria for each zone like if it's old town and central zone 
we agreed not eventually not, not to have uh, uh, regular cars at all. Therefore, some measures were suggested. In the middle zone and other territories, we agreed maybe to have um, some cars, but uh, again, with some restriction with uh, different parking policy and so on and so on. So first of all, we, we agreed on what we want to see uh, as a result in each part of city. And for this, of course, uh, is very important the network of for commuting for streets. And uh, in Lithuania, we have situation that uh, even if we know the categories for streets and if, even we hypothetically know how do we need to serve for commuters and for for carrying passengers and goods, it's it's not in fact is is it differently and if we have the lowest and highest category streets they look similar and people behave similar if we have the local category streets which are meant for children and uh, adults to get home uh, with uh, low speed and uh, with bicycle in the mainstream and so on and so on in fact in reality is not the same because uh, streets are so wide you can go so fast and uh, they are serving for transit and they are unsafe and so on so what we did first of all we just set uh, this uh, street network in prioritizing and suggesting uh, particular measures how to make it happen that in, in the highest category street public transport doesn't go and people doesn't go and birds and animals don't fly and don't happen to happen because a category is for freights and uh, and transit and they are not going through the city then we have uh, another category for main uh, public transport network and uh, this this category of streets must be the priority for public transport and then only with uh, some possibilities for cars to be used and of course with good uh, separated infrastructure for cyclists and pedestrians and then we have uh, another category of streets which um, serve mainly in in residential areas and of course the most important thing for us is just to show that in the low in the most of the streets are meant for for reaching objects and they must be designed in the way and built in the way and behaved in the way uh, every every passenger, every uh, person feels safe and can use the measure he, he, he chooses to use for transportation, for his mobility. So that was our first thing. And then on this, um, on this structure of the city and the street network, we of course set uh, all the different measures which which we are which are connected so uh so i think i told it already but then uh uh for example knowing the street network and knowing uh, knowing um, our zones we could we could set some restrictions particularly for urban freight and for for speed in some residential areas in the city center uh, we also uh, analyzed and suggested zones where, uh, where which should be low speed zones, homes, so, so streets could be uh, used as public spaces, but not as place for parking and, and for uh, commuting and even for speed transit. Uh, further, we uh, suggested, of course, uh, uh, in the city center, restriction of transit, various schemes were suggested. Also, we suggested uh, the boundaries for low emission zones. Uh, we suggested which zones should be car-free zones from now on, and we suggested which zones should be shared uh, share spaces, and everything has spatial localization, as you can see, but not in very details. Uh, I already mentioned that we suggested cargo management and some restriction for residential areas, for densely populated areas, for centre, and how to consolidate logistics and, and proposals for uh, cycling cargo and so on and so on, which, by the way, is already in reality. We have cargo bikes uh, delivering goods and, and, and Vilnius, even in winter time. And uh, I, I, I almost already showed uh, the zones for low emission and low, low speed and quite a 
quite quite natural and public zones. I think it's also very important because without having this, we cannot draw main pedestrian uh, streams and areas. Uh, what else we did? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, accordingly, of course, we suggested some, not some, but uh, major changes in parking policy uh, because you probably didn't have a chance to see, but we suggested to increase the boundaries and to increase price and uh, because uh, in, in comparison with the Baltic states, uh, in Vilnius, uh, parking is really cheap in comparison with Europe, it's extremely cheap. So so we suggested new zones for parking, uh, for paid parking. We suggested to to increase price. We suggested to uh, uh, increase boundaries. We suggested, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, network and development of uh, regular park and ride or multimodal points. Depends on how, how pilot project uh, will be successful and uh, having this parking policy in mind we of course knew that uh, public transports must collaborate and correspond to the to this policy of street network of uh, parking policy so main routes of uh, of uh, public transport are uh, connected with future public uh, park and ride or multimodality point uh, we also have um, lines for uh, for fast public transport. Uh, when I say fast, I mean not really bus rapid transport, but uh, like smaller version of it, which we have already. Uh, the uh, regular or bigger buses, we, we don't have a, a physically separated line, but we have priority, we have fewer bus stops, and we are... Uh, fast and effective. By the way, when we looked at the at data, uh, we saw that if if a little bit usage of public transport is decreasing year by year, in uh, routes of uh, fast buses is increasing. So I think uh, it's, it is very important having something faster than regular buses and trolley buses. We also have ambitions to abuse uh, really, which is crossing Vilnius, but uh, now it has only very few stops, one in Vilnius and, and few in boundaries or already out of the boundaries of Vilnius, but uh, it's not absolutely not used for daily commuting and the reasons are known and the solutions are suggested how to incorporate into the uh, city network. And of course, we, as I said previously, we described some preconditions uh, and some zones uh, where public transport needs really but to be very close, very fast, very effective, and to get to very reliable and less intensive public transport zones were also uh, suggested in, in less residential areas or industrial areas or so on. And of course, we have zones where public transport has to be improved, but not necessarily in the same quality and the same uh, volume as in the city center or residential areas. It could be on demand or or other modes of, of public collective transport, but not necessarily regular buses or trolley buses. Christina, and, just if you would slowly so, come to the end, so we can take some questions also, but perhaps you just present the most so, important things. So, so, of course, we had a suggestion and solutions for bicycle network and for uh, uh, increasing uh, system of uh, shared bicycle, which is existing. And uh, and uh, I cannot go faster because of animation. <laughs> And the final, let's say, point, at least in my uh, presentation, if, is pedestrians. We have um, main routes for daily use for pedestrians, and they must be uh, good. And also, we have another measure: is is each school, each uh, each business center, each uh, I don't know hospital, and so on, must have a travel plan. And first of all, conditions to be reachable on foot, not not mentioning all the measures so yeah 
So that was uh, all I wanted to show and not to get into the details with um, solutions, just to show how we were positioning and what was our starting point and how did we end up with particular schools at the end. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Christina. Thank you very much for such a very comprehensive and very inspiring presentation. And I think there was really a lot of information for all of us to to digest, uh, but it was really, really impressive. Thanks a lot. And um, mm -hmm. I will answer the biggest question right away to everybody. Um, you will all receive the recording of the webinar and also all the presentation afterwards. So you can have a look in peace on the, all the slides one more time. And and, um, and we will also share the contacts, etc. So if there is something coming up afterwards. Um, then there was a question coming up, uh, Christina, if uh, Vilnius has an English version of your SUMP and if you have it available. English version? No, yeah. I'm afraid no. no. Well, we had, a, because we we were working together with uh, my beloved professor, Tom Rai, which we probably know, we had mm -hmm. some parts translated like uh, objectives, like uh, like you see this presentation is, is also in English. So there is some parts mm -hmm. in English, but we have, well, we have website with all the material and I think Google Translator also <laughs> yeah. a lot uh, and you, you can always contact me and I could say that this question, for example, was not uh, elaborated in our plan and it's not worth to look for, for example, in our SCMP. So yeah. those parts which, uh, which we have, I can, I can try to collect, uh, for example, next week and to try to share. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that was one uh, question from from Tünde, and she had another question about um, has but well, if the Vilnius SUMP has been approved by the city council, it's just about to happen. Okay. It, uh, pr procedures are so that uh, we first of all need to finish and then to to have uh, uh, publicity, then to go to ministry, and and now I think these are the final stages of. Uh, Mm, approving. If some of my colleagues are participating, you can write in com comments. Maybe it's already this Wednesday. It's Thursday. Wednesday. So council today, is working. Yes. Yeah. So it could be okay. even today. Then it's it's okay. It's, 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 okay. okay. Great. Yeah. Um, for all the other attendees, if you still have some questions, you can uh, add them to the question. Uh, box or otherwise raise your hand or somehow if you have something immediate right now I would have a question um, because I mean I have to say it was really impressive to listen to like the whole process and well a few things mm -hmm. I knew already before um, and I'm always every time especially impressed of this whole um, process of uh, involving citizens and what you mentioned about the ownership and so on and I think it's a uh, it's really great that you have a ma the vice mayor that is kind of owning the process. But I would like to know a little bit, like how do you work internally in, in a very practical way? You said that he's leading the working group. So um, mm -hmm. how, who was, um, who started the whole thing up then? Or who set up this working group and who was in the working group? And can you tell a little bit more about that? So I was invited uh, uh, to, first of all, in, uh, in the, our recommendation, national recommendation, there is requirement that uh, uh, SCMPs are not uh, shouldn't be prepared by planners only. There should be officially should be some working committee, which consists from NGOs and uh, different departments of the city and so on. So this was the legal and official working committee, which was established uh, even before setting up the task for SEMP and hiring the company and, and me as coordinator and so on. So that official part was done because of uh, regulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Officially, unofficially, uh, vice mayor uh, had a like we had like a steering committee, like a cabinet with uh, really stakeholders, like um, director of uh, public transport operator company, like uh, 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 administrative director of the city. Uh, whom else we had? Carriers, director of carriers, really important persons were in this 
uh, lower scale working group, but this group was working on vision mainly. After it got already to the contracted uh, planners and uh, preparation process, this group was not really needed that much because when actually work started, we continued working with planners and uh, different stakeholders. So this uh, working group, like steering committee, it had participated in the envision setting up process. But all the way uh, of preparation, uh, uh, Vice Mayor, of course, was owning process and was uh, really uh, showing attention, not always maybe supporting with some decisions, but sometimes very supporting. And mm -hmm. then we, when we reached the stage of, uh, uh, of clear vision and some conceptual uh, suggestion, the mayor office and mayor also joined this, um, this process as well. And we had like, um, like, I don't know, four maybe very productive meetings with mayor and his office. And so he was also always was informed and giving some feedback to us too. So these were, uh -huh. then we've been working with politician again for our vice mayor and, uh, and city council secretary. We were trying to involve them and invite, but this part at the beginning was um, uh, zero effectiveness because uh, politicians were not showing up, but uh, mm -hmm. But we were collecting one by one, one what, well, actually, for example, one politician wanted to just, um, was in a position and wanted to, to participate, to be able to, I don't know, to do something just um, in a bad manner as politicians. So he, he started to be interested and then he get involved. Another politician, mm -hmm. He was, uh, for example, Englishman, and he was already aware about this process. So because of the uh, interest in the whole sustainability, he, he got involved. Another is uh, another politician, he, his background is, for example, architect, and he got interested. So by, by the end, even in, in, in city council, we had kind of group of supporters. Although in, at the beginning they were quite opposing because of they, they job is to oppose uh, what mayor is doing. So this way we collected some politicians and we had really good dialogue with them. And uh, in terms of working group who was really uh, planning and writing. So again, if my colleagues are listening, we were really few to be honest, and uh, I was not really helping with writing or analyzing things because of all what you have just heard and mm -hmm. internal communication. So I was responsible for managing communication within the team, which was quite small, and uh, also with the uh, owner of the project, of all the stakeholders, of com uh, the community, and so on. And we had uh, quite a few people which were, uh, how to say, universal and we could work on different topics and we had a, a very specific uh, a specialists who were doing very very concrete parts like modeling uh, transport flows or analyze analyzing and describing uh, a design for for people with special needs so so we had a smaller uh, uh, we, we just integrate Thing then, but uh, generally those two years, uh, three, three to four persons were working only on this mobility plan. Mm. So it was not difficult to coordinate because the team was quite, as I say, quite small, but we were subcontracted different, different specialists, like I already mentioned, anthropologic, economist, yeah. and LTS solutions and so on. So we didn't have them in house. And, mm -hmm. but once, but, but we had budget for them, which was yeah. good. Yeah, so okay. that was okay. Mm -hmm. procedure. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, I think that that uh, is really interesting for others to hear also how it's like organized in practice. And I think it was, yeah, it's really interesting to hear how you work with politicians. And also, I mean, it's also always, of course, in, important to hear that those things that might be might be a bit problematic, but I think you, you uh, succeeded really well. And Violetta from Zagreb already wrote here also that she feels very inspired and that you oh, did a great job. You. And I think so too. <laughs>
Great. So, um, if there are no other questions coming up right now to Christina, I'm sure, is it okay then if somebody has something later on that they people could contact you? Of course, and uh, yes. I would like to because Vilnius uh, SMP is finished and uh, yeah. I need hungry Pana of SMP. <laughs> Kidding. Yes. So, yes, if there are something I can give advice or share, just write yeah. me uh, my email. Right. Well, at least yeah. I show my email on the screen. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, the email is there and we can include your contact details also in the wrap up email to all the participants. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot, Christina, for participating um, and for yeah, being part of this from even from from your work trip. <laughs> thanks mm -hmm. a lot. And um, so we will go uh, one more time to um, to some polls before we end the the webinar. Um, just a second. Because before we end the webinar, we would uh, yeah, like to know uh, from you as participants what kind of um, yeah, what kind of support you would be interested in the future. Uh, what kind of um, um, methods you would uh, appreciate as, as municipalities or as mobility practitioners to learn more about the SUMP. So that we also get some input in you know our own work and perhaps new projects or ideas what we could do to to help you with that with that topic couple of seconds still. I think I can close now and share. So we have here 64% for all webinars, training workshops and peer-to-peer -peer exchange. 43% uh, e-learning -E and then the guidelines, guidelines on SUMP. Yeah, I mean, the guidelines on SUMP are uh, currently revised, so they will be launched uh, next year, like the new version of the SUMP guidelines, and they will still be, of course, like the basis for all the other activities. Um, the e-learning courses, as Maya announced, so we will launch um, the first package from uh, our that we developed now within this project this Friday, so you can also have a look and see if that's a method that would be good for you. Um, and uh, otherwise, yeah, I think this is a clear clear information also for webinars i think it's really a good method to have a um some kind of short short inspiration perhaps during during a day training workshops and then peer to peer exchange i think that's also something that yeah we we should uh, take on to have uh, like a bit like in smaller groups and have really really exchange between cities that would be probably really useful Okay, thank you for this info. And then um, a last, a last one. Um, as I said, that we will have more um, webinars coming up, and there are some ideas for topics uh, already. But we would like to also hear from you, of course, like what uh, topics regarding SUMP you would be mainly interested in. We have here um, uh, SUMP measure selection, like how to select measures, how to prepare the action plan. Um, how to integrate SUMP to other uh, planning practices and other plans like urban planning and climate uh, related plans, etc. Innovative financing measures for SUMP and then stakeholder involvement and citizens participation. That will give us also a bit an indication of what are the topics that are most uh, interesting to you and then we can try to find those good case examples uh, in in our networks and in Europe to to present and to to give some some input and inspiration. Mm -hmm. I close the call now and share. And so we have here stakeholder involvement, preparing the action plan, and integrating of SUMP as the three most voted, so to say, the financing and then the measure selection. But it seems that all topics are very re relevant 
and I assume also that we will actually take up most of them um, in those, at least in the coming uh, in the coming webinars for next year. As Maya said, the next one will be on uh, data collection, uh, but then we will organize still uh, four more after that. The next one. Okay, thank you very much for that. Now it's uh, 34 past 12 here where we are, or past 11, or wherever you are. So we come to the end of our webinar. Um, yeah, just uh, one more time. So you will receive a wrap up email after this, uh, after we close the webinar. Um, this will contain uh, the information where you find the recording and all the all the uh, presentations and contact details and links etc. For um, yeah, so that you can still have a look look on 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 all the material. Then uh, I think I can already say that uh, have a nice holiday season and um, thank you very much for participating. And then we hope to have you on board in the next webinars as well. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye bye.